you back today with another video. Today's a very special episode. I'm gonna show two uh, box sets for two classic albums. Two classic albums. The first one is Deep Purple, Machine Head. That's what we're hearing right now. What we're hearing right now is actually this uh, cassette tape that I have, because I won't be able to show you the record. So uh, I can tell you the record, uh, and the, uh, it also comes with CD versions. They sound a lot better than this tape. This tape is very uh, uh, sort of muffled sounding, kind of bass, bassy sounding, but it still sounds okay, you know. But um, anyway, that's what we're hearing right now. So this is the new uh, Deep Purple Machine Head. I think they have a name for it, the 2024 Remix. Machine Head 2024 Remix. Remixed by Dweezil Zappa. This is just a slip case and stuff comes in and this is just a, uh, <clears throat> that's a, exactly the same thing as it came on the back of the slip case. So held on to that. So, uh, yeah, so, so the, the record has been remixed and, um, Uh, yeah, remixed by Dweezil Zappa. So I guess, you know, Dweezil Zappa, obviously because of uh, Frank Zappa and the Mothers, uh, you know, were playing the night uh, that the uh, casino in Montreux burn, burned down. Some stupid with a flare gun. Burned it to the ground. So, um, yeah, I guess I got Dweezil Zappa to... Uh, to remix it for him. I have no idea whose idea it was, but um, I tell you, I mean, I was kind of concerned when I first heard about this because it's one of my favorite albums and I thought, you know, I mean, there's really no need to uh, fool around with it. But I've heard it and it's really, it's really good. I really like the, the remix. I, 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 uh, I don't know if I'd say if it sounds better, but I mean, it sounds great actually. It's refreshing to hear it. It's sort of a new version. It's, it's not drastically different. Um, I would play some for you, but I, I really, it's not that different. I, I think, um, well, you surely wouldn't be able to hear much difference with me talking over it. Uh, and there's uh, plenty of videos where they present it on um, uh, high quality audio on YouTube. So I highly recommend that you check one of those out. Record comes with this poster with the lyrics. It's the same as the original album had in 1972. And I, I think most of the reissues have it. Here is that what actually came in the slipcase, which this is, as far as I know, this is identical to the original, to the original cover. I, uh, you know, <laughs> I have guitars and I have played them before. I, I know a little bit about guitars, but you know, I just never, I've heard these called like tuning keys, I guess, or something, but these are machine heads. These are the machine heads, the, the tuners for your guitar. So that's where the title comes from. So yeah, 1972 album by Deep Purple. British band, Deep Purple. Uh, 2024 remix by Weasel Zappa. Here's, this is the same as the original album too. Lots of cool pictures in here. And uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, Went out to you. Uh, it's a funky Claude there. Claude was the guy who suggested to them that they record in that casino, and uh, he helped them to find the Grand Hotel where they ended up actually recording it. So, uh, yeah, so it comes with a record. And uh, so this is the 90, uh, the 2024 remix. This is purple, well, it's really hard to tell, but it, it's a very uh, light shade of purple, maybe sort of orchid, I guess, or violet or something like that, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, it sounds great, fantastic, I'm mean, really very happy uh, with the sound of it, and so it also comes with a um, 
CDs that fit down in these pockets and come in these cool sleeves. It's much better than just having the CDs to fit down in there. CDs are pretty generic looking. But yeah, this one is uh, the 2024 remix and also the 2024 remaster. Uh, so 2024 remaster. I guess that means they remastered the original album. So it's three, the remix and then the original album. And uh, one thing I meant to mention at the beginning was that Jamie Cottle did a great unboxing uh, for this unboxing video. So I'll leave a link to his video uh, down there uh, in the description. And uh, let's see, what else did I want to say on here? One thing that they did change about the record is that they added in a song. Oh yeah, they added a song called um, When a Blind Man Cries. When a Blind Man Cries. Uh, and that is one that is a, like a slow, sort of a slow blues song, sort of like a, uh, what's it called, Mistreated, maybe on, uh, on Burn or, uh, well, anyway, it's like a slow blues song. And uh, uh, reading this, this book that comes with it, Roger Glover says he's really glad they included it here. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I agree with uh, Richie Blackmore's original idea to leave it out because it's a slower blues song and the rest of the album just rocks. So, uh, but anyway, oh, so what I wanted to say was that the, uh, the record has that song added to it. On the record, I really don't like that they stuck it on side two between Lazy and Space Striking, which is, Space Striking was the last song on the side. Well, it still is the last song on the side, but they suck when a blind man cries in between. I, I really don't like that, you know, because I'm, I'm used to hearing it the other way. So, uh, but on the uh, CD here, they didn't do that. They, they, they added it, but they added it at the end. So I think that makes more sense. And then on the original album, the 2024 remaster, they didn't include it at all. So I think that's good. They give you, you know, all these different ways of hearing it. I wish they, you know, like I said with the record, I wish they hadn't. Then there's uh, two live CDs. This is Montro and 71. So this is all songs that are not on Machine Head. Most of these are from N Rock, I think. Uh, this is really good. Some of this is really low quality audio. It doesn't really say what the source is. This really good. Uh, it's really good jamming from uh, both John Lloyd, the organist, and from. Uh, Richie Blackmore. There's a cool version of Paint It Black on here, which is an instrumental version, which focuses on Ian Pace. Ian Pace, fantastic drummer, one of my favorite drummers. Really long version of Ring That Neck, which is another uh, instrumental, just a jam for like 18 minutes or so. That really goes on for a while. Then they close out with Black Knight and Lucille. So that's a really good one from 71. And then there's another live one here from 72. Oh, no, this is a Blu-ray. So this is a Blu-ray with like some different mixes on it and stuff. I haven't really done anything with that yet. But, um, oh yeah, the other concept from 72. So this has the songs from Machine Head on it. The only problem with this one is they have an announcer. It must be a TV show or something, or maybe it's a radio show, but there's an announcer between the songs. Songs talks between every song, so I don't really care for that. Sort of cool though when he comes out uh, after Lazy and um, he says, I can't, uh, um, you know, I can't believe it, but this next song is going to be the last one. It seems like you haven't played that long yet. And he says, uh, uh, something like, please say it isn't so, guys, or something like that. He says, this next song is called uh, Space Tracking. So um, I don't know how long it is on here, but I know it's like 20 minutes long on the made in Japan album, so it's, it's really long on here too. I mean, that's, so they probably hadn't told the guy that, you know, yeah, we could play three more songs or we could play Space Trucking for 20 minutes. So uh, yeah, Space Trucking, fantastic song. Uh, I did a video a couple weeks ago about uh, Eight Miles High, about how that could possibly be interpreted as a drug song. Space Trucking, I think, surely could be interpreted as a drug song in this booklet here I'm going to show you in a second um, they talk about how uh, 
Ian Gillen at first didn't like the tie for smoking the water. He said that was a drug reference. And he says we really weren't a drug band, we were a drinking band. So, yeah, very cool. Uh, uh, yeah, the song that's playing now, Lazy, is probably my favorite song, one of my all time favorite songs. It's this part right here. <laughs> I just love that song. I, uh, I've never figured out, you know, is he, is somebody yelling at him and saying, you know, you're lazy because he's laying in bed or, you know, is, is he yelling at somebody else or, you know, is he looking at the mirror and saying, you know, you're lazy, lay in bed. Yeah. Fantastic. But the screaming part, Ian Gillen is just the most fantastic singer. So here's this awesome book that comes with this box set. Hotel. They put up mattresses and blankets and stuff as baffles for the recording. Really cool picture of the band there. There's some quotes here. So Ian Gillen's probably might be my favorite, you know, heavy metal rock type singer. Another one is Rob Halford. I mean, I think they both just have these incredible voices. There's a quote here from Rob Halford. He says, um, "Machine Head is fierce and it's intense. That album really, really works for me." Rob Alfred, I think, because, but yeah, I think they're both just fantastic singers. There's uh, some quotes from it. Uh, there's some stuff from Dweezil Zapping here. There's a really cool article here. It's written by uh, their roadie from back then. Sort of an interesting perspective on it. And looks like this is in the process. Though. So they wrote the whole album while they're there and Mantra and recorded it in about two weeks. So picture of Richie Blackmore. I tell you, the more I listen to Deep Purple, the more I really appreciate uh, Richie Blackmore's guitar work. I mean, he obviously his leads are incredible. He just is doing so much incredible stuff while John Lord is playing organ leads. So, well, yeah, there's a picture of the burning casino. And different album covers from around the world different seven inch single jackets from around the world. Cool picture of the band. Here's the, <laughs> this picture is just awesome. I mean, doesn't that just look like a, a, you saw those guys standing on the street, you'd say, oh, well, the, there's some rock stars. I don't know who they are, but those guys are rock stars. Uh, anyway, totally cool book, so yeah, totally happy about this whole deep purple experience. Come on, let's go space trucking. Um, I'll pause right here for a second. Oh, okay, so change the music there. The other, uh, sort of like a box set, it's not really a box set, it's a book, actually is The Doors. The first Doors album. Over the past year or so, I've been collecting the Doors albums, I really hadn't had any of them before then. And so uh, this almost completes the collection. I still have to get um, the Soft Parade. So this was the 50th anniversary edition from 2017. I'm sure somebody from the vinyl community showed it back then. I think I'll show it again. And uh, it's really cool. This one, uh, there's the, I think that's the front and the back of the, album and then the book itself came with this uh, paper that fits over it that tells where all is in it. And there's this uh, cut out here. It's a numbered edition. There's a cut out there to show what the number is. So the number is uh, 16,228. So <laughs> I don't know. But I guess they don't necessarily say it's a limited edition. They say it's numbered. So um, yeah and then here's what the inside of it looks like. And there is what's sort of a drawback for me is there is no separate um, record jacket. You have to, it's tucked into this front pocket here. It's the mono version of the record, the original mono version. And um, sounds great. Uh, I've never really heard the whole record before, so uh, some of these songs were new to me, um, but they're, uh, I think, 
all of them. Are, uh, well, yeah, Soul Kitchen. Yeah, Crystal Ship is the flip side of the uh, single. So here's the uh, Light My Fire single, Crystal Ship. So I'd heard Crystal Ship before. That's a fantastic song. <clears throat> 20th Century Fox is a cool song. That was a phrase, like when I was in junior high school, you would hear, uh, you know, girls would be, you know, refer to girls as, oh, that's a fox. Or, you know, Mata Hoopla has a song called Foxy Foxy. But, <laughs> I mean, that's a phrase that, as far as I know, I don't think anybody uses that phrase anymore. Um, so, uh, yeah, here's Soul Kitchen. Yeah, fantastic. One thing I noticed when I played the record was on Light My Fire during the part, especially when Ray Manzarek is playing organ solos. It just sounds like there's this problem with the drum. Every time John Dinsmore, I think it's like the snare drum. It just sounds like there's this, it sounds like the microphone's too close. It just, it's distorted. Well, then I played the mono version on the CD and you can hear it on there too. So that's kind of disappointing. I tried it on this uh, seven and single, and actually you can hear it on there too. I've never noticed it before on any of those. I think this record maybe just brought it out more. It's kind of unfortunate. And I tried it on the stereo version on the CD, and it's, you know, now that I know it's there, if I really listen for it, I can still hear it on there too, even though it's much more buried and it's not coming out of both speakers. It only comes out of the left speaker. So <clears throat> it's not as bad, but uh, I wish I'd never noticed it. In the first place, but as far as I can tell, it's actually on. It's in the recording because I tried to do it digitally on Apple, uh, on YouTube Music, and um, I can hear it in there too. If I really so, it's like in the part where, like I say, early in the song, after like the first verse, when uh, Ray Man's Eric is playing a, a longer solo, you could just a distorted drum. So it's kind of disappointing. But other than that, it all sounds great, and so it comes with. Um, the CD that we're hearing now, which is the original mono mix. It also comes with the original stereo mix. And then there is this CD from the uh, Matrix Sessions, which I got that four record set of the Matrix Sessions. So this is kind of redundant for me, but well, this kind of breaks it down some and edits it a little bit. So, you know, I'll probably end up, I think, probably playing that much more often than the four records. So. So this is it, the first Doors album. This also came with a booklet. Extremely cool. Tells the whole story of the recording process. And there seems to be some dispute as to what, if Jim Morrison actually threw a TV or just knocked it off of a stand it was on. It's weird how people who were all there at the same event, have different memories of that event. Here's a really cool picture of the band. And one more really good picture. So that's it. Two, uh, I mean, you know, they're really not box sets, but I guess you call them special editions. So both, so 50th anniversary special edition and 2024 Remix Special Edition. Look at that in both of those. So, uh, that's it. I, uh, that's it. I hope everybody is doing well. Let me know what you think about these two records. And, um, yeah, I guess that's it for now. Oh, I, I meant to say that I hadn't, I checked this morning to see if the Vinyl Orchard had done a review yet of this Deep Purple uh, remix because uh, you know I'm sure there's a lot of big Deep Purple fans in the vinyl community who make videos but uh, he he really knows a lot about him he's a big fan so I'll be looking forward to see if he uh, you know maybe he'll decide not to get it um, I think he probably will because he'll want to hear that remix too so uh, of course he can hear it all online if he wouldn't didn't like it I guess he wouldn't buy it so um, uh, so anyway give it a listen let me know what you think about it and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.